I never thought I'd have a hard time following myself. <laughs> I know I deserve that kind of an introduction. Um, this, this poem, I'm, I have a hard time not introducing my poems because I'm insecure. Um, so this poem is more religious than the last one I read, but I, I, I just want to tell you guys that um, this is me sharing my personal experience and not trying to tell you what to believe or anything like that. So just take it and do whatever you want with it. Um, but it's called Bethel, and I'm going to start saying it now. <laughs> like gates letting traffic breaking in in waves, alternating red and green lights, romance me like Christmas Day as I came down off the highway. There are no stars in this place. They've all been chased away by floodlights flooding gas station parking lots. Well, at least it's quiet here. I walked through the wind and into a building which smelled like cheap cigarettes and sold cheap Native American artifacts. A voice on the radio greeted me, singing, I'm not the man I used to be. Look at me. Nobody looked at me or greeted me, <laughs> which is probably a good thing because I'm sure I lost my voice 100 miles away, praying loud enough to be sure God heard me. <laughs> well, at least it's quiet here. Back in my car, I realized for the first time how much I love and how little I deserve the family that I just left, but behind me also are all of my old ghosts and regrets. I can't help it if they live in the same house. I mean, I've lost one too many battles between those walls to be able to sleep like I used to in my old bed. So one night, I stuck open in burning red. I carved this song in my headboard, word by word, until the sun chased away the hands pulling at my throat. It read, I used to believe that if I didn't beat myself up, I would never really learn my lesson. I thought, if I forgive myself for this, then this will never change. I was stuck believing the lie that regret is repentance, that penance is the same as penitence, that there is no healing where there is no pain, so my feet kept stumbling beneath the dead weight of all of yesterday's shame and mistakes, and I thought to myself, this will never change. So 100 miles ago, I started running away and screaming every word I've always wanted to pray. And as soon as I stopped long enough to catch my breath, I could hear my God answering me out of the stillness of a starless night, as black and as silent as death. He said that this regret is a sickness, eating away at my bones until I can barely stand, but that an innocent man suffered so that I wouldn't have to, so that I would never have to stand alone. He told me I had been standing alone until I forgave myself like he already had. That would never change. I said, God, there is no hope for a weak man like me. He said, lift up your eyes and tell me what you see. I said, you don't want to know what my eyes have seen. Awful, terrible things. He said, no matter how scarred they are, they still know how to read. I said, I have named the sickness in me a demon so I can hope someday it might leave. He said, stop feeding your demon shame. A man died to set you free. I said, I owe you everything. Sorry for hitting the mic stand. <laughs> So 100 miles ago, I started running away. And in those few minutes, all of the rage I had felt pulling at my throat is gone. And in its place stood a man with scars like tears lighting his face. He said that he knew the name of every single ghost and regret which haunts me to this day and that none of them are big enough that I should ever need to run away. And then he said he heard everything I screamed. And everything else that I forgot to say, like, thanks. Yeah. Salina is a pile of dirt on which I've rested my road-weary head these few minutes, but I think I'll start calling it Bethel.